I think we have had uh, now many years of being promised a series of reforms that we have frankly been waiting for quite some time. And so, um, there is a, frankly, there is a credibility problem that needs to be resolved with serious supply side measures. But I think there is an even uh, more near term problem with at, at, as things are standing, we really run the risk that you will end up with a vicious cycle where the exchange rate keeps falling, you get inflation, inflation causes exchange rate also to, uh, to fall further, and really much uh, more urgently than getting on with the supply side things, we need to get on with stabilizing the economy right now, which requires a serious monetary contraction, but also very serious fiscal contraction and that is this is needed very quickly. Now, I'm not going to get into a debate about you know, long-term reforms right now. Right now, what you need is serious fiscal consolidation. Instead, what we have so far been hearing is, in fact, even more uh, spending plans. So surely, you know, uh, have foreign or domestic investors are going to be somewhat concerned about this. No, so, so let's put it very simply. Fa food subsidy bill was a terrible idea, wasn't it? Uh, Sanjeev, what is the message that it's given you? When you handle global markets from a global perspective, what is the message it gives you? And then I'll take a response from Salman Sos. See, many of these plans, uh, these uh, food subsidy type plans have been tried for decades now and clearly they haven't removed hunger. So we need to relook at the whole strategy. If they haven't uh, removed hunger for over the last several decades, we are not going to remove it using this strategy going forward. Surely we need a new strategy, uh, especially since the PDS system and other things are not being fundamentally changed. So the mechanism you're going to use for this uh, pumping through this subsidy is pretty much the same old system. Yeah, so Salman, so as we come back to you at uh, this no, point. I have a very more interesting more, study more here. You want to signal? Just, no, no, watch, watch. Let, 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 let me get an open round. I just want to open this up. One second, Jyoti, and then Piyush, Piyush and Meghna Desai and Rajiv, you can all come in. So my question, because we have one representative yeah, from yeah, the yeah, Congress let me, let me, today. No, you see, point is, Salman says, all I want you to one. do, all I want you to do, if you would like to, is admit mea culpa, that we did it all wrong. That's all. Then we get into the business of how we... No, no, then, then we get... No, 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 no. But the problem is that you two are being completely obdurate tonight. You see, your finance minister says Ooh. the fourth most important step we must agree is to revive the investment cycle. We must unlock the stalled pro pro projects. How long have these projects been pending, Salman Sos? <coughs> the fact that you cleared so many projects so Look. soon is only, is only proof of the fact that all it was required was a sustained push. Why was it not done earlier? Well, why, you know, why am I paying I the price have, look, because look, you didn't do I anything have, for I nine years? To, I have to, I have to, no, 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 yeah, I mean, nine years, I, I told you and I repeat that the people of India spoke, uh, you know, for the first five years. So please don't speak for everybody, okay? But the people of India spoke. Let's no, give it a break. Now, let me respond to, listen, let me please give no, me an opportunity to respond. Because no, no, but you, you know, one, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, I must correct you. No, no, you said don't speak don't, for anyone. The people of, you, you know, this argument of yours that we won the election, so we were right is not necessarily right. So I think that obviously... No, 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 that, no, 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 I'm not... I'm saying, saying that... I'm saying, saying that... Action, I'm saying that... I'm saying that... Action, I'm saying that... Well, hang on. Can now. I... Can I... Can I... Can I, can I talk? Cycle, because it's my turn. And, and, you were, and you were taking the... Having the benefit of the... Uh, can I... You're not... So you're taking my turn. You're taking my turn. You're speaking... You're speaking in my place. Yeah, but I mean... But but you keep... You keep repeating yourself. Are you... Are you... right thing to do. No, but you haven't given no, me an opportunity, no, Mr. Piyush Goyal is it, said. Is it good? Mr. Piyush Goyal well, said. Is it, is, it, is it good? Can you please is listen? Good? Will, I mean, sir, will you not listen to me? Will you not listen to me? But you can't, you don't have to repeat will yourself you not all to the me? time, for God's sake. No, you're, no, please go ahead. No, but uh, you know what? I haven't, even, I haven't even said anything. So let me say. Okay, let him complete his Mr. point, then Piyush Goyal will rebut. We benefited from uh, 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 NDA's times and, you know, UPA1 was a success built on that. By the same logic, NDA's uh, success was built on Mr. Devi Gowda's work and Mr. Gujral's work. I mean, what kind of logic is that? Then you keep talking yeah, about corruption. I keep hearing. Growth. I keep talking about corruption all the time. You should, you should please. You, you, well, there you go. This is a very. This is not a joke, Mr. Piyush Goyal. I'm being very serious about this. Now you also you talk about joking, corruption. My friend. Look you at transparency, international growth. Trans, transparent to eight percent. Mr. Goyal, you, transparency. You got eight percent. Mr. Goyal, let me give you some. To four percent. Let me give you. Let me, give, let me give you some statistics, Mr. Goyal, data. 
Please do. On corruption, which is your favorite topic these days, Transparency International, during NDA times, public sector uh, corruption, right? We were in the bottom 25% of the countries worldwide. Right now, we're somewhere in the middle, okay? So please check your facts out there. Now, on the 2008 part, no, what no, have you been doing? One second, one second, one second, one second, one minute. I don't let these things go. No, are you saying one minute, one minute? I don't know, one, oh, I don't know what Transparency International NDA says, NDA but is the Congress... Of the magnitude of 2G, Commonwealth, I, yeah, and Trick is the, Rivers, I'm not, I'm not no, saying the Congress, is the Congress... Let me ask you, is the Congress representative, Mr. Gosos, you are the Congress representative. Is the Congress representative on the program tonight expecting the viewers of News are to believe? that after the biggest string of scams that any government in independent India has seen, not that you are giving that. yourself uh, please, a certificate listen, based, upon some, give... based upon some transparency no, 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 international no, no, statistics. No, 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 Is that the no, fig no, no, no. that you are now going to hold on to? I am just... No, 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 that, you, you no, no, no. the transparency no, international I'm fig leaf now on corruption? Can you, can you please... No, no, no. Arnab, if you will allow me, please. Mr. Piyush Goyal wants us to believe that corruption exists now. It never existed before. Corruption has existed. People at home no, know why it. Do, they, why it still exists. To... People know it. Of this okay. I, I, I accept it. That okay. You I have accept it. The Mr. Mr. Soz, I'm asking you once again. Mr. Mr. Goyal, let us. Mr. Soz, I'm asking yes, you please, once again. Ask me. I'm asking you once again. And 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 you know I. There are a lot of there are a lot of people. I want to talk about fiscal profligacy. One minute. I want to talk about fiscal profligacy. Yeah, yeah. Profligacy. Fiscal profligacy has been going on since your farm that. loan waiver, and and the finance minister says that all these yeah, measures so, only happened between 2009 and so, 2011. So let me. Who was the finance minister in 2008? I want to. I want to. Who was the finance you, minister uh, in 2008? Uh, uh, that if you look, why is it? Why is it that you people refuse, absolutely refuse, to accept? that in 2008 and 2009, while the world was suffering, we were still doing okay. And we had to take steps at that time to make sure that we would remain okay. Now, you call it fiscal profligacy, we call it stewardship. We had to do something at that time, otherwise the situation would have turned grave. Okay? Now, has, has that impacted us? Absolutely. No, no, you, what I'm asking us. you is, Our no, please don't set the right. terms of the debate like that. I'm only picking up from Chidambaram's Ten Commandments. Now, Chidambaram says... I'm only picking up from the debate. No, no, I, one second. Mr. Mr. Sos, please listen. Now, now here's a question. It's but very basic for us. Now, I need to come in here. Can I just come in here, please? Uh, Mr. Rajiv, no, no, Rajiv no, Kumar... Come in here just to correct, Mr. Uh, to, Mr. to correct Mr. Sos... Go ahead. In February of 2008, six months before the Lehman crisis, the finance minister increased the public expenditure by 3.5% of the GDP. He had the farm loan waiver, he had the six pay commission, he had the Menrega expansion and the, and the joke going around is that we in India are so smart and we, that and we, we anticipated the Lehman crisis. Mm -hmm. We reflated, we reflated yes, the yes. economy beyond doubt, beyond any, any, anybody's imagination. We told the FRBM to go to hell and at that same time the RBI was raising interest rates in July 2012. It is, it is totally fortuitous that the Lehman crisis came when it did and because we had deflated, therefore we got 6.9%. But that is the price that you are paying today. Did we, did we only get 6.9%? Minister, who is a conscience keeper of the country, that, that, is it, that was the year that you got 2008-9, you got 6.9%. <coughs> but the fact is that once the conscience keeper go? of the government where of the did it country... Go after that? No. Let's let 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 you know. No, no, let's let's everything. let's let's it let's is, get one thing. Open, let's get one thing very clear. No, no. This, the, let's get one thing very clear. Yesterday, Chidambaram admitted there were domestic problems. That you? was that was good because Salman says. And Sanjeev, I'm just coming to you. You see, the problem has been so far. You blame global factors and you blame everything else, including the weather and uh, everything no, 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 possible. No, no. One that. second. You I want to blame? No. One second. One, one second. One second. Please understand. Now, so Chidambaram says, 10th step, 10th step, 10th step, Chidambaram says, we have to find a way, and I appeal to all of you to uh -huh. find a way to resolve the impasse in coal sector, iron sector, environment clearances, and land acquisition, which has come about due to judicial intervention. Now, Mr. Soz, is that completely correct? The impasse in the coal sector is entirely the government of India's doing, because more than 80% production has not started yeah. from our mind due to the government's poor monitoring of the companies that were allotted coal blocks. The impasse in the environmental clearances is even more unpardonable for the government because the environment ministry has been with the Congress party. Land acquisition is a failure to build political consensus to get a bill passed in parliament. Iron ore ban was a result of unchecked corruption. Corruption with political patronage. 
the judiciary has been forced to intervene as a result as a result of the executive created botch up malgovernance and vacuum you don't want to admit that and even on news are tonight mr sos you are unwilling to admit I that wanted, you've done anything I wrong i want to tell you no no i did not say that i remember you were saying that i'm saying i'm saying that look policy mistakes can happen in any government and it, they have happened in our government as well i'm sure but what i'm trying to suggest is the real discussion should be about start. what do we do from here so now, say, what, if if one of the gentlemen i, I believe in six months Singapore, you'll be general election he, he mode and you're asking the people of this country what you will do from here what have you been doing for nine and a half years resign well, that's the, mr goel you keep going resign. back to nine and a half years and i keep telling you i keep telling you that compare look growth during upa uh, upa's time 8.3% your times growth 6% what is okay this? please what? check your numbers you talk about rural infrastructure okay rural okay we're getting a rebuff from satish no no we're getting see, see we are asking so you, just take a minute your pius is responding to salman i want to talk about solutions mr goel do you want to talk about solutions to salman so do you want to talk about solutions responding to you yeah we'll come to that mr goel i'm but you must understand that the upa government has single handedly demolished every institution in this country or oh, really you have institutionalized poverty really? you have institutionalized Im, uh, instability and insecurity every uh -huh, time the uh -huh. congress has come into power and i have statistics from 1947 onwards if your camera arnab can pan it mm -hmm. every time the congress has come into power inflation has been high interest rates shoot up the dollar increases in value and rupee depreciates every time they come into power there are job losses every time they come into every, power yeah, there's yeah, yeah. series of scandals and corruption every time they come into power they make tall claims of reaching out to the poor but in reality they just do consumption expenditure but infrastructure suffers at one time india was spending 30% of its budget on capital expenditure when the nda came into power we inherited only 22% of budget in capex we increased it to 23% now in the last 9 years the out of the budget only 11% is spent on capex they don't believe in developing infrastructure they don't believe in creating jobs in the name of yeah, we, don't. Security, no, no, we don't we don't we don't believe yeah let me full of the people I? of india they just the food security bill that you supported mr goel and calling it food, the food security. security bill that you Stop supported in politics out of everything it's not happening I don't I don't know Ardab you got to ask Mr Goel Ardab you should ask him maybe he won't listen to me on I, if I could just make two points one on infrastructure because you raised the issue is uh, this issue PMGSY which is a flagship uh, scheme of the government and Mr Vajpayee initiated it in 2004 expenditures on PMGSY 9000 crores check the latest numbers 56000 crores just so one point about that second can i can i can i just ask can i just can i can i just can i just ask you no no what can i just ask you one question no sir 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 salman so salman so salman so you have brought it down to 23% salman so salman so that is your please please understand why i am asking the question and i am going to open the phone don't give an absolute number the economy has grown no 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 obviously with inflation at double digit pius ko help me pius ko help and salman so cease fire between both of you for just a minute Please ask him this question. No, no, one sec, one sec. Mr. Rajiv Kumar, one minute. Salman Sos, I'm going to Sanjeev here. I want you to consider the situation tonight. Salman Sos, just take a deep breath and consider there is somebody watching the news other side. Now that somebody is insecure about their job. Okay, that somebody is tax paying, is middle class, has worked hard. His or her parents have worked hard, built the basis of the economy. Okay, that somebody is going to pay higher EMIs. They pay 240% more for vegetables and milk, right? Their rate of increase in power and fuel is 11% per month. And that somebody is asking you that that somebody hears the finance minister say the following: the finance minister says what we need now is not less reforms but more reforms. What we need now is not more restrictions but less restrictions. What we need now is not a closed economy but an open economy. I mean, who can usher in reforms? Is the government? who can open up the economy is the government for 2 years now the government has been 
in policy paralysis. Four and a half years you've had to push through reforms. You don't want to talk about nine years. Now you are giving us, you're stating the obvious, which is the need for reforms. Now, how does that sound to someone like Sanjeev Sanyal sitting in Singapore? That the finance minister of India with six months effectively before the government becomes lame duck saying, we need to do more reforms. How does that sound to you, Sanjeev? Can you put a dose of reality into My this frank debate? Frankly, f frankly, right now the situation is that the long-term reforms probably have to wait, sadly, because the th situation is winding into a, where we need to stabilize the economy very, very quickly. Yes, we need to get the investment cycle going and all those other good stuff. But frankly, I would love to find out from the Congress spokesperson, is he willing to even carry out the basic act of carrying out a major fiscal consolidation right now right to stop now. the rupee from spiraling out? What would that mean to in real terms, Sanjeev? Give me one example. What would that mean to in real terms? No, act how, how? It would mean in real terms that at least for now, yes. you're willing to increase the interest rates, you're willing to slow down the economy, you know, which will be painful, given that the economy is slowing down anyway.